Okay, Paul here in Chiang Mai, coming out with this YouTube vlog on Barcelona's sensational remontada at the Camp Nou last night, making history to overturn a 4-0 deficit from the first leg of their Champions League last 16 against Paris Saint-Germain. Incredible scenes, Jeff. Unbelievable. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, well, I made it clear actually on a couple of vlogs that gave Barca no hope of overturning it, you know, and just goes to show how amazing and beautiful football is that it makes fools of us all, you know. Everyone, you know, thinks they're an expert, journalists, from journalists to fans, reporters, you know, the beautiful thing is we all really know nothing at the end of the day. We can try to be as close as possible and use informed opinions. But, you know, I just, I, in terms of context, in terms of the way in which PSG beat them in the first leg, the way Barca were struggling so much for a playing style in midfield in recent weeks with Iniesta and Busquets really struggling for form, it was just really hard to envisage how they could do it. I did see them scoring three or four goals, you know, with the Camp Nou really uh, beckoning them on and pushing them on the whole way. I've been at the Camp Nou on those Champions League nights. It's, it's a sight to be seen. It's spectacular atmosphere uh, and last night will go down as arguably the most historic night in Barca Champions League history in terms of uh, the spectacle and the epic nature of it but yeah I mean nobody saw them doing it in the way they did it to score 6-1 what odds would you have got on that would have been tens of thousands to one probably um, there's a lot to get through here of course a lot of controversy around it now polemica Particularly in Spain, the Madridistas are uh, are very much up in arms with a lot of the decisions that went Barca's way. Um, so my globality take, as Jose Mourinho would say, is that Barca pulled off a thoroughly epic comeback, and you have to doff your hat to them. Even though I was ready to tweet, like to, once they got the four goals, I was like, look, they can go out with their heads held high. Even when they got the fifth goal, you know. It still would have been a monumental effort if they had just went out on virtue of away goals. But then to, to get the sixth, it's truly remarkable. All right, maybe I'm repeating myself now, but let's. You got to also take into consideration PSG completely um, just bottling it, total bottle jobs. They, you've got to look at Unai Emery, who clearly set the team up too defensively. They wanted to just bank on losing three 0 on the night. When they, had they come and played with ambition as they had in the first leg. Obviously, it's not going to be the same as in the first leg. They're playing away from home. But had they at least um, gone out on the attack and gambled on scoring a few early goals along with Barca, they would have, it's great to say that in hindsight, all right, but come on. To set up so defensively was, was really shooting yourself in the foot, uh, proverbially speaking, metaphorically speaking. Um, so yeah, look, let's get on to Barca starting 11 because time is ticking here. 3-4-3, Luis Enrique lined out with Ter Stegen and goal, a back three of Mascherano, Pique and Umtiti. Very interesting, you know, no fullbacks there um, in the starting lineup because they wanted to uh, have extra verticality, I guess, with the, uh, the four-man midfield. Rafinha on the right and uh, Neymar on the left. Well, I'm just looking at market, we market set it up here as sort of like a 3-1-4-2. For all intents and purposes, it was a 3-4-3. Busquets is the holding pivot midfielder. Um, Rakitic and Iniesta as the, the centre midfielders. Um, and then you could say, it was kind of, I think officially it was Rafinha up, up front with Messi and Suarez. But Rafinha was also kind of playing as a right winger at times. Um, right midfielder, should I say. Look, who cares? Systems and all formations are arbitrary, especially on a night like last night. So the first goal just comes in pure pandemonium the way the first two goals came about in fact. I mean the Suarez one, what was it, two and a half minutes was around the clock. The way he managed to just get it over the line. There was a brief moment where people were wondering whether it had crossed and of course it crossed the line. And that was just exactly what Barca needed to, um, to generate extra belief in the, in the stands and amongst the players, amongst the staff and everyone. And then the, uh, no Barca really, Barca up the intensity right after that goal and pegged PSG right back. We're playing in the PSG half the whole of the first half and eventually they got that second goal just on the stroke half time in the 40th minute. In fact, 
massive credit to Iniesta for the way in which, I mean, the, the daring do and the, the ingenuity to pull off that sexy back heel. But then Kurzawa, who had an absolute nightmare on the night, um, managed to shank the ball into his own net. It was completely avoidable. It was possibly symptomatic and symbolic of just how they were bottling it and they lost their nerves doing rash things like that, like slicing the ball on your own line and sending it into the net. So it's 2 0 at half time, and you know, you're kind of thinking, yeah, interesting second half ahead. Could we see a 4 0 uh, to take it into extra time? And then we're into the second half, Barca continuing very much where they left off. And then we're, we're getting into the controversial moments here because the first controversial moment, quote unquote, was the penalty which Messi scored, the origin of which came from Mounier fouling Neymar. Let me be clear, to me that's a stonewall penalty. Um, so Iniesta, massive credit to Don Andresito, the way in which he threaded a ball into Neymar to run onto. Completely bamboozled Mounier, who fell over. He's fallen over and Neymar has been tripped by his head. It's a definite penalty. Messi converts and then the Camp Nou comes alive, but then just... How many minutes later was it? Wow! Oh, it was 12 minutes later was uh, the Edinson Cavani goal. So Cavani actually had an interesting night because he and a lot of the players were really very nervous looking. They were asking for yellow cards the whole time, acting like babies. And uh, he actually got booked, Cavani, in the first half four, trying to influence the ref like that. But credit to him, he, you know, he misses a lot of chances. He's kind of infamous for uh, blowing hot and cold, smashed the ball into the net there and PSG thought they'd won it at that point because once PSG got that one, I mean Barca would need six on the night, three more, with what, half an hour remaining, it, was, it seemed virtually impossible because all the wind had been blown out of the Barca sails then, it was a massive, uh, massive blow to their, their momentum. And so, you know, you continued watching, I think everyone was watching thinking, you know, there was a feeling something still could happen, a minor feeling, a chance that Barca kept believing they weren't creating much chances from that point on. But they they were still getting in there. It's, that part that period's a bit of a blur to me now, you know, between the uh, 62nd and the 88th. The 88th is of course when the game was re-injected with life, when Neymar Jr., the man of the match, um whipped in an amazing free kick, you know, right in the 88th minute. There's two minutes left, and it was, the celebration were kind of muted. It was like, all right, get the ball. Let's see what can happen. Well, you never know. And then sure enough, just moments later, the ball is floated over. And Luis Suarez goes down after Marquinhos raised his arm on him. Okay, this is a very, very soft penalty. Very soft. PSG are very much within their rights to feel uh, hard done by with this incident. Um, but Marquinhos raising his arm was asking for trouble like that and like it's kind of the more you reflect on it you kind of think that's part of the game these days to go down when there's contact he conned the ref Suarez he did but I think Marquinhos only have to blame whoa whoa back up back up I gotta mention two very controversial moments I've highlighted how good Neymar was and I'm also going to speak about his role in the winning goal now as well but he should have been sent off he had a kick blatant kick out when it was 3-1 on a PSG defender. He was already booked, it should have been a yellow at minimum. Probably a straight red in fact, but for a blatant petulant kick because he was probably getting frustrated at that stage. We've also got to mention just moments before the Neymar at 3-1, the, uh, the Mascherano fell on Di Maria. Di Maria was through on goal. Mascherano slides in from behind with like Hacker from behind, what was he doing? I mean, he was clearly just trying to get him sent off and avoid the goal. He was a kamikaze moment. He only barely touched him, but it was enough. And it, you know, that should have been a penalty. Mascherano himself admitted it afterwards. And I would say credit to him for coming out and, you know, admitting it. Very magnanimous, magnanimous of him. But now we're on to the, uh, the massive, epochal, epic moment when substitute Sergio Roberto, of all people, Manages to ghost into the box. Neymar, you know, it was like that Churchillian quote of keeping your head around you when all when there's chaos going around you, something to that effect. The way he dinked that ball in, the little clip over the top, you just can't you can't make a final point on how 
amazing that was by Neymar. That was the moment of the match. The fact that he could dink that ball over for Sergio Roberto. He says afterwards he actually told Roberto he was going to try to play a ball in for him. Possibly because they knew Sergio Roberto wouldn't be picked up by the PSG defence. At this stage, PSG are just like out on their knees, just waiting for the final whistle. They've lost all composure because what are they doing trying to play offside? Like Aurier and uh, what's his name, the Polish defender? Kuchowiak. Uh, sorry for, uh, if I massacred his name there. The poor guy was only on the pitch three minutes. He came on with PSG winning to do a, a job of seeing the game out and he actually ends up, you know, just completely losing concentration, not tracking Sergio Roberto, both him and Aurier. So Roberto scores the goal, a la Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, absolute scenes, la remontada, completed. Amazing, amazing for Barcelona to do that. Football is amazing, that's why we love it, that's why we watch it, that they could pull this off. Look, Barca were brilliant. The faith and the belief to never give up and to, to, to make history as they did. Also, you've got to just lament how poor PSG were for completely bottling the team. 4 0, their greatest ever game in the Champions League in the first leg. It's all gone to waste now. And then you've got to mention the ref. The two key moments are the, you know, the penalty Di Maria couldn't, should have got, and then the, the very soft Suarez penalty. But I'm going to be clear, I think it's not the way the Madridistas are going on. They're talking about a repeat of like Barca Chelsea, the infamous. Obrero, the Norwegian ref who, who didn't give Chelsea four penalties back in 2011. This is not on the same scale. Look, there were a couple of decisions that went to Barca's favour, but I feel like that's just really sour great for Madrid. This is even the PSG players and fans. I know PSG fans personally. A couple of journalists are so foot who weren't talking about the ref. Very magnanimous of, magnanimous of them. So look, that was my vlog on that amazing night at Camp Nou. Barca back in for the treble now, they're, they're top of the league, I mean, they were being written off just a few yeah. weeks ago when they barely beat Leganes, nobody knows anything, that's why we love football, thank you so much, muchas gracias for watching, and hasta luego, please do subscribe to my channel for uh, passionate, articulate football vlogs, particularly on the, Spain's big two, a lot more to come from my channel as well, cheers, bye bye.